Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be talking about the centripetal force. The equation for the centripetal force is that the force is equal to the mass times the velocity squared divided by r, where v squared over r is actually your centripetal acceleration. Now we have a simple experimental setup to actually demonstrate the centripetal force. Now let's have a look. Here we have just a little simple bung that's connected via a string and a little cylinder over here and the string goes on and it's attached to a mass at the other end. Now notice that. So here's a really simple question. What will happen if I let go of the mass? If I just suddenly have it like that and no particular motion in the system and I just decide to let go of the mass, the mass will just simply drop to the floor. However, let's see what happens if I was to start spinning this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this here with the mass like this, currently balanced by my hand. Then I'm just going to give the whole string and bunk some um, little bit of velocity. And now I'm spinning this and now I'm letting go. Now notice that the only difference is that now there is a centripetal force acting and it's balancing out the weight and that the magnitude of that centripetal force is equal to the weight that's been attached at the bottom. We could actually investigate this relationship if we could figure out how fast is this bunk going. So let's have a look at this. So welcome back to my digital whiteboard. Here's a little representation of our experiment. We have the cylinder and we also have a mass and the uh, radius of the circle is R. I'm going to try and keep that length constant throughout this experiment. The first thing that we're going to do would be to measure the time period with a stop clock. Because this in practice is actually really hard because the time period is really small and the human reaction time is what about two tenths of a second on average or something like that. So uh, what one way to really decrease our percentage uncertainty would be to measure 10 time periods to reduce our uncertainty. Not only are we going to be measuring 10 time periods and then later divide by 10, but also we're going to take multiple measurements and then take the average in order to reduce our, the effect of our random errors. We're going to be measuring the radius R with a ruler, of course. So in the exam, it's very important to mention what instrument we're going to be using. And we're going to be measuring the time period with a stop clock. Our table of results is going to look something like this. So we're going to have the mass, then we're going to have the force, which is just M times G. This here is, of course, uh, just the force from the mass straight down. That's going to be balanced out by the magnitude of the centripetal force. So in a way, you're going to have MG and we're also going to have MV squared over R acting upwards, perfectly in balance. As I said, we're going to take or we're going to measure 10 time periods. We're going to do that at least twice and then take the average of those values. After we find the average of those values, we're going to divide that number by 10. And only this over here will be our time period. After we have our time period, we can actually find the speed at which the bung is going. In order to do so, for this column over here, we're going to use the equation that V is equal to 2 pi R divided by the time period. R, the quantity R, we've actually measured with a ruler, and T, we've taken multiple measurements and we've averaged to find the time period. We're also going to square the value of V because the equation for centripetal force is that F is equal to MV squared over R. So it really makes sense to square that value. So after we do this for one mass, what we're going to do is we're going to add more mass down here. And after we've added more mass, we're going to repeat this. We're going to find the speed for each mass. I'm going to be increasing from, from about 100 grams to maybe about five or 600, maybe even 700 grams and see the effect on V squared. After we've done this, we're going to be plotting a graph. 
So after we have our data, we're going to plot a graph of the force, which is just simply mg, and that's going to be on the y-axis. That's going to be against this column, v squared, which is going to be on the x-axis. If the relationship is correct, we're expecting the graph to be a straight line through the origin. Let's do our y equals mx plus c analysis. Our equation for centripetal force is that f is equal to mv squared over r. I'm going to add a little plus zero because I'm expecting the graph to go through the origin. The equation for a straight line is that y is equal to mx plus c. So let's just write that, mx plus c. And if the force is on the y-axis, if v squared is on the x-axis, what is left for our gradient, actually let's call our gradient grad simply because the mass is already called m and I don't want to cause any further confusion. What is left for our gradient then will actually be the mass over the radius. And if we wanted to, we could find the mass of the bunk using the following equation. That the gradient, let's call that grad is equal to m divided by r, and the mass of the bung will actually be given by the gradient grad multiplied by the radius, assuming that we've managed to keep our gradient constant. Okay, folks, well, this was a classic experiment on circular motion. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.